Hello everyone, I'm Junior. I'm an instructor here at Easy Wheels Driving School. I want to talk to you a little bit today about our great institution. Uh, we're one of the best driving schools in New Jersey. We've been in business for over 30 years. Uh, what sets us apart from everyone and everybody else is that we do one-on-one -on -one training. We make sure that um, it's one instructor per person. We don't do group training to give you the highest and best quality experience that you can have to get prepared and become a very skilled truck driver uh, for your future. Um, alongside of, of this, we're here today to actually perform a pre-trip inspection. Uh, this is one of the things that is required to do at New Jersey in order for you to pass for your CDL Class A or B or so on in any commercial. So we're using a Class A today. I'm going to demonstrate it, uh, how to perform it, the inside part of it. Uh, so let's begin. So um, when you first come to the truck, there's something called a three-point contact, right? So you must grab onto the truck always as you go in. You gotta face it as you come out, you gotta be also facing inward. So you got a handle, you got the door handle, and you got your steering wheel. So we're gonna stop here as the, you guys come around and come in back inside. Okay, so when you are beginning for your air brake inspection and your cabin inspection, um, there are certain things you need to do in order for you to require a certain amount of points. Uh, you can't make a mistake uh, in the air brake system in that part of the test because then that will cause you to automatically fail. If um, you are done with the air brake system, then they will count the rest of the points and add that to the points on the outside in order for you to pass that section of the test. So the cabin inspection will have no more than 15 points and I will point those out for you. So to start off, you're gonna start off with a safe, uh, safety start, which consists of your seat belt, making sure that your seat belt is functioning correctly, it's not ripped, torn or frayed, it locks properly. Okay, you make sure your stick shift is in neutral with the splitter and the T-bar down and the brakes have to be applied so you pull on both of them. All right, turn the key to the right. Tell me ABS light turned on and then turned off. So that ABS light is actually a point right there, okay? So at this moment, you look at your air pressure and you make sure that it's not full. If it's full, you can't just turn the vehicle on and say, okay, my air pressure is full. No, you are required to build it up. So in this scenario, since it's full, you will tell the examiner, I'm going to lower the air pressure by fanning the brake. If you turn, if at this point, the air pressure wasn't full, it was less than 120, if it was around 100, then there was no need for you to fan the brake and you would just tell them, I'm going to build up the air pressure and then you would just turn it on. So in order for us to build the air pressure is just turning the vehicle on and in order for us to lower the pressure is pumping the brake. So in this case, I'm gonna lower the pressure first by fanning the brake down. I'm gonna fan it down. Somewhere about 100 or 90 doesn't really matter. And then now that it's low, I'm gonna tell the examiner I'm going to build up my air pressure by turning on the truck. So I clutch all the way down, make sure it's in neutral, and then you turn the key to the right. And now, the truck is on and the air pressure is building. So you're gonna wait, it's gonna take a few minutes and you're just gonna give a little bit of gas. I will accelerate to about 10 to 1500 and just hold it there and tell the examiner that the governor is going to release when the air pressure is full between 120 and 140. And we're gonna wait for that to happen, okay? So we're just gonna wait. You could lower the window a little bit if you like to so you can hear the, the governor sneeze. All right, as you all heard, the governor sneezed, the air pressure is full between 120 and 140. You have to confirm that to the examiner and you tell him you're gonna begin with an air brake test, okay? Now this is the part where you can't make any mistakes, okay? So the air brake test, you're gonna clutch all the way down, you're gonna grab the stick shift, you're gonna pull left and, and you're gonna pull back. You're in first in this tr particular truck, okay? That can vary depending on the truck. You turn off the vehicle, once it's completely off, you don't let go of the key so you don't forget. 
you take your foot off the clutch and you turn the key to the back on position, which is to the right in this case. All right, to the right. And then finally, still in the air brakes, you're going to release both brakes. So you're going to push these in. You're going to push in the tractor first, nice and firm. You can use your palm so you don't hurt your fingers. You hold it for about three seconds. Do the same thing with the trailer brake, which is the red one. One, two, three. All right. You can use your phone, your watch, whatever you like. As long as it's some kind of a stopwatch, because you have to wait a full minute. It has to be a full 60 seconds. So for the sake of this video, I'm not going to wait the full 60 seconds, but I'm going to pretend I am. So this is what you would say. You will have your timer ready, and you will say, I cannot lose more than uh, four pounds of pressure in one minute. And then you, you can, after my initial air loss, and then you're going to apply the brake, and you're going to start the timer and say starting now. So you would press the brake, starting now. So you time it for a full minute. After the whole minute passes, the whole 60 seconds, you let go and you say, I did not lose more than four pounds of pressure in one minute. Okay. Next part of the air brake test is I'm going to check the low pressure warning light and alarm. And it's going to come on right before it reaches 60. So since the pressure is up, we're going to fan it down so it could lower. And it once right before it gets to 60, the light should the buzzer and light should turn on. And it's only gonna work if the key is on the on position. So if you forgot to turn the key to the right, that will cause you to fail. Because the alarm won't work in the in the light. So let's start fanning it down. And as you can hear and see, the low pressure warning light came on and the buzzer is sounding, the alarm is sounding. And it's right before 60. So you tell the examiner, my low pressure warning light and alarm is working. It came on right before it reached 60. Finally, the last part of the air brake test is the emergency spring brakes. They have to pop between 20 and 40. Now, you cannot, for any reason, touch these brakes now at this point. Or as soon as you have released them, you can't touch them. If you slightly just check them, you will fail the test as well. So your hands have to stay off. As I pump, sometimes one brake releases and the other one stays in. Again, you cannot touch these brakes. If you touch it, you automatically will fail the test. So your job right now is just to pump until they both pop on their own. And we're going to start fanning down. All right. So both spring brakes have popped between 20 and 40. This time they popped out simultaneously. Sometimes it's one at a time. You just got to pay attention and just make sure you don't put your hands on them. Now, once that's done, you can take a little breather because you just passed one of the hardest parts of the test. You passed the air brake test. That's an automatically pass or fail part of the test. There's no points in that, okay? So now, the rest of the part, uh, the rest of the test, we're going to try to ga gather all the points up in order for us to pass the whole thing. Right now, I already have one from the beginning with the ABS light. There's 14 more points, and I'm going to try to get them as we go along. So you will tell the examiner, I'm going to build the pressure back up again. So you're going to clutch in, make sure this is in neutral, right? Because if you turn on the truck while it's in gear, the truck will try to move and it might, it's going to stall and you will, show, you will fail the test, okay? The brakes are on. We know they popped. So we're going to hold the clutch in, turn the key to the right. The truck is on, it's building up air pressure. And we're going to take time uh, advantage of this time. While we're waiting for the pressure to build up between 120 and 140, we're going to conduct the inside cabin inspection, okay? So let's gather some of these points. The most you can get is 15. We have one with the ABS in the beginning. Now we're going to work with our mirrors and windshield. So my driver's side mirror is securely mounted, has no cracks or damages, uh, no illegal stickers. Um, my passenger side mirror is not cracked or broken, securely mounted, no illegal stickers, no obstructions. Uh, my front windshield, not cracked or damaged, no illegal stickers or obstructions to block my view. And that would be one point for that. Your wipers, you don't have to actually turn them on. I think the, the better way just to check them is to push in the little button on the side or press the handle in this particular case. So I'm going to hold it in for a few seconds. As my wipers are working, I was, and they also are spitting out the liquid, I'm going to say my wipers are working smoothly, all right? Uh, has proper tension against the, the windshield. Uh, the washer fluid is working as well. It has fluid uh, and they're, they are not dry rotted. All right. So if you say all those, at uh, least four things about it, it should be enough to get that point. So that's the point on its own. So we had the ABS light. We had 
the windshield with the mirrors that was another point and now the wipers and we're going to continue on uh we could come here and i can check my horn so i have my electrical horn is working my air horn is operating correctly as well that's another point we can go to the lights so we could work our way like in an order uh i got my in we're doing the inside lights we're not working on the outside currently so you're only checking what's on the dash so my left signal indicator is working correctly you must identify by pointing by the way if you have your arms crossed he doesn't he'll you know not know what you're talking about or referencing and he might not give you the point my right signal indicator is working correctly is fast is flashing my four-way flashers are working correctly and my high beam is also you turn on the headlights in some vehicles and you pull towards you and you'll see the high beam indicator is also working correctly now all those lights that we just checked is only one point for that all right so we're going to continue now i'm going to go to the gauges now the gauges is a important part of the test that you do not want to miss because there's a lot of points there it's four gauges that you must mention and all and that's each one is a point so we have the oil temperature gauge is rising currently to normal operating range is around 30 pounds uh 30 pressure uh, no warning lights or alarms. My water temperature gauge is also rising to normal. Okay, so our water temperature gauge is at normal operating range. Uh, there's no warning lights or buzzers on uh, indicating something's wrong. Uh, the pressure is around 180 currently. Uh, the temperature, sorry. Uh, the battery gauge, the voltmeter gauge is at 14 volts. It's at normal operating range. Uh, there's no warning lights or buzzards and it shows that the alternator is charging and my air pressure gauges are rising to normal operating range the governor is going to uh, cut out uh, between 120 and 140 so those four gauges uh, are the are the main ones you have to say those are four uh, points that you definitely do not want to miss the term that I use normal operating range is a term that they use in their uh, DMV manuals so it's something that they accept and they're um, waiting for you to say um, continuing on from there the next thing would be we can work working our way towards the right I would do my defrost and heater so um, I would turn the knobs all the way to the right all three all right make sure my defroster is working correctly and then i would turn the knobs to the vents right to the front ventilation and bottom and say my heater unit is working correctly so the first knob is to turn the fan on the second one is to control the temperature and the last one is where you're placing it first one was defrost and the second one was the heater unit okay and then you can shut those off okay continuing on now as far as the points go, so I can just recap, uh, we had the ABS line at the beginning was one, we had the mirrors of the windshield was one, the wiper was one, so that's three, we went down to the horns, that was four, then we went to the lights, that was five, then when we went to the gauges, that was four points, so four plus five is nine, and then the defrost and the heater, that's ten, okay? So we're going to do now the emergency equipment. So that's three uh, three points on itself. So we're gonna do those points now. So the first one would be for the emergency is I have electrical spare fuses. I have a, a, a three triangle reflectors inside of the box in case of an emergency, three red triangle reflectors. And I have an ABC fire extinguisher that's fully charged uh, with a locking pin. And uh, the gauge is on green, which means it's full. And it's on my driver's side over here, on my side over here. So that would be a three additional points. So we're up to 13 points. Now it's 15 in total. So we're now that we did the whole cabin inspection, there's nothing else that you can say or do to get any more points. So you're just going to make sure that the air pressure is full. Sometimes, if depending on how fast you conduct the cabin inspection, the pressure might build up before or after that you're done with the cabin. So I know it's full. I heard it. But to double check, what you do is you hold the gas pedal down. Uh, you bring it up to about 10 RPMs and you hold it for a few seconds. If you notice that the air pressure does not move at all within a few seconds, then the, the governor already sneezed and the pressure is full and you just have to confirm it. My air pressure is full between 120 and 140. But if you do notice that the pressure moves slightly, like it rises, then just wait, hold the gas and wait for it to actually sneeze and then you confirm it to the examiner. That's a very important thing to do because you must make sure you tell the examiner that it's full. You must double check that. 
So, like I said, the air pressure is full between 120 and 140. And now I'm going to conduct a tug test. or I'm going to check the brakes. Okay. This is the last two points that you're looking for to have the total of 15. And it's pretty simple. So what you do is we're going to check to see if these brakes are holding correctly, which is the tractor and the trailer. And then the service. There's three of them. So I'm going to clutch in. I'm going to put it in first gear in this scenario. And I'm going to release. I'm going to check the tractor brake first. So the one I'm checking has to stay out. So I release the trailer brake. And I'm not looking for the truck to move. I'm looking for a, just a slight little vibration. Uh, once you feel it, a little tug, that's more than enough to confirm that the truck is holding, uh, the tractor brake is holding, right? So there you go. My tractor brake is holding correctly. I'm going to apply the trailer back on. So I pull the trailer and I left it in gear because my clutch is in, it's fine, and the brakes are on. And I'm going to release the tractor. All right, so now I'm checking the trailer brake and I'm raising the clutch to feel that vibration as you can feel it it tugged a little bit right so my trailer brake is holding okay now we're going to check our service brake now to check the service brake i still have my foot on the clutch because it's still in gear i'm going to apply the service brake down and i'm going to release the trailer and the tractor is already released and now i'm going to roll a few feet so i gotta raise the clutch a little bit first and right when i feel that the clutch is going to grab the proper way of taking off so it doesn't the truck doesn't ever rolls back for you is raise the clutch and when you feel it is about to catch contact then you release the brake okay so as I, my foot goes up and i know it's about to grab on i let go of the brake and then as it moves then i'm going to clutch and press the service brake down and it's fully stopped the truck it didn't tug left or right so that means everything is, is good it's balanced and i'm going to put this back in neutral i'm going to apply my tractor and my trailer to make sure everything is nice and safe and then you shut it off you tell the examiner that completes the air brake test and the inside cabin inspection and we're ready to go to do the outside part of the test so i hope um this helps all of you guys i'm sure it will this is the how to pass the air brakes and pre-trip inspection uh for your to get your commercial driver's license it's only the first section of it there are more sections uh, you have to do the outside, you have to also do some maneuvers, some parkings, um, there's a few different types, and there's also a driving section. And us as Easy Wheels, we are here for to provide that service for you guys. Uh, we do that one-on-one -on -one training, we make sure that you will be more than uh, prepared with all the experience that we have uh, to pass that test on your first try.